Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about probably one of the easiest plants to keep, full stop. And it's this plant right here, Zamaculius zamifolia, commonly known as the ZZ plant. So today, we're gonna to talk about why they are the easiest plant of all house plants to keep. So pretty much in the year 2000 or around the year 2000, the ZZ plant was introduced into the plant keeping industry or plant keeping hobby, whatever you wanna call it. They were suddenly readily available at nurseries and they were named the world's easiest plant. So what makes this plant so easy? Well, honestly, it's a number of things, but pretty much majority of the things you have to worry about when you're talking about virtually any other indoor plant you don't necessarily have to worry about so much with a ZZ plant. Now the ZZ plant, or the Zamiaculia zamifolia, is native to South Africa. It comes from a very dry climate, where it's living in very dry soil. And the environment is just generally pretty harsh that it's living in. So as a result, it's adapted to be probably one of the most durable plants you can possibly get for your home. So one of the things you'll often hear me say when I talk about pretty much any other plant in my plant videos, when it comes to buying them, is make sure you check them thoroughly at the nursery before you buy them. For example, check the foliage, make sure there's no pest insects on it, check that it's got um, thick, lush looking leaves with no damage, check that it hasn't got any signs of root rot, like yellowing or rotting leaves. When it comes to buying a ZC plant, you don't have to be as picky, to be honest. If you want to spend the extra money and get a slightly bigger and more bushier one like this, by all means, if that's what you want, go for it. But if you were to cheapen out and get a slightly lower quality one with just fewer leaves, chances are that's really it. It's just gonna have fewer leaves from the start. It's not gonna have any ongoing problems. Like if you were to buy a cheaper alocasia or something like that, that comes from a less um, reputable place. Just taking it out of the basket, a little bit difficult to hold in that. One thing you probably noticed with the ZZ plan off the bat is that it's a decent sized plan as well. So if you want something that's a bit bigger, these are a good option. Their stems can grow between three and four foot long. So they have quite a bit of a reach with them. So if you want something a bit bigger, definitely go for one of these. They do grow quite quick when you put them in certain conditions, which I will talk about in a second. So the first thing we're gonna talk about that makes these easy plant is lighting requirements. Usually when I talk about any other plant, they come with a more specific lighting requirement, whether it be high lighting or medium indirect lighting. With the CC plant, they're very, very versatile with what lighting you offer them. These are literally the sort of plant that are for the person who can never keep plants alive in their place because their place is too dark. These will do fine. Now, I'm not saying that these are a low lighting plant that likes being in very, very low lighting conditions. They're a plant, they still have to photosynthesize to survive, but they can tolerate lower lighting where other plants will just die. But if you can offer it higher lighting, give it higher lighting. Like I said, these can go in anything from high indirect light to medium indirect light to low indirect light, which like I said, most houseplants can't do low indirect light. These can still live in low indirect light. They're just not gonna grow as quickly or as big. But if you're one of those people who has a very dark place that you live in, your unit or your house doesn't get much indirect light at all and you have trouble keeping most other plants, these might be your only option to be honest, but at least they will survive at least. So when it comes to placing these, you can put them virtually anywhere you like. As long as they at least get some form of light, they'll at least survive, if not thrive, under higher lighting situations. You can almost kind of regulate how long these stems grow based on the amount of light you let them have. Under high indirect light, the stems are gonna grow very, very long, very, very quickly. Under low indirect light, they're not gonna grow very long. The plant in general will stay a lot shorter and more compact, and it won't grow new leaves anywhere near as quickly. There was actually a study done on these plants um, by another plant YouTuber that I cannot remember the name off the top of my head, sorry, but I saw the video so, so, so long ago where they actually, they put a ZC plant in a cupboard, shut the door of the cupboard for six months, gave it no water, no light for six months straight, opened the cupboard six months later, and it was still alive. Didn't look great, 
it looked very like, you know, unhealthy, but it wasn't dead. Where any other plant in that situation would have died within the first couple of weeks. So it's just a little idea of how durable these plants are regarding lighting. But like I said, don't intentionally put it somewhere where it's in the dark. It needs some light at least, but even low indirect light, it can kind of deal with it. So now you've placed your ZZ plant in your home, wherever you see fit to do so. Next thing that makes this plant a hell of a lot easier than every other type of plant around is the watering of your ZZ plant. Now ZZ plants don't need much water at all. You water them about as often as you can water a cactus nearly. Um, everything about this plant is designed to conserve water, so it doesn't need you to water it all the time. Quite often the only way people manage to actually kill ZZ plants is by overwatering them. To give you a rough idea of how long you can go without watering it, compared to other plants. Like most other house plants on average, of course, depending on the climate as well, but on average they get watered like once a week to once every two weeks. With a ZZ plant, you can water it once every two months. You can water it once every three months if you just happen to be that lazy, but it's not a big deal. Now, why can this plant last so long without water in absolutely bone dry soil where other plants can't even last in bone dry soil for a few days? Why is that? Well. If you were to take the ZZ plant out of its pot when you like repot it or something like that, which we'll talk about repotting as well, because that's another area that's different. But when you unpot a ZZ plant and you look at the root system, it has something a little different to most of your other typical house plants. It has a very thick root system like a lot of plants, but it also has tubers. These are basically like these giant potato like bulbs amongst the root system. And what it does with those is that is the storage for water, for nutrients and for starch. See, plants basically create their own food in the form of sugar and starches via photosynthesis. But other plants utilize it a lot quicker where ZZ plants store most of it in these tubers or in these rhizomes. And over time, their rhizomes get bigger and bigger and bigger because they're filling up with all the nutrients, sugars and starches. They also store a lot of water in there from when you water them. And that is their reserves for when the soil is dry. These plants do not like to have wet soil for any length of time. They prefer to be in dry soil for majority of the time because they're quite happy to live off the reserves they've got in their tubers. So if you forget to water it here and there, don't worry about it. It's not gonna change a thing. If anything, this plant will probably prefer it because when you do eventually go to water your ZC plant, you don't wanna water it the same as other plants do. I'll often say with most of your other tropical plants, you'll completely water them to the point where the pot is fully drained and soaking wet. You'll take your other tropical plants and put them under the tap in your bath or shower, water them thoroughly, let the pot completely drain through. Not the case of these. When you water these, you wanna water them sparingly. So this is a decent sized CC plant. As you can see, it's in a reasonable size pot. I would only give this about half a cup to a cup of water at a time, which isn't that much for this pot size, but that's all it needs. Because like I said, it's got those uh, bulbous rhizomes that are already full of water that it has access to anytime it wants. And when it comes to fertilizing these, again, it's something you don't have to do that regular either. Most other houseplants you'll wanna fertilize roughly every one month to two months. With the ZZ plant, you can fertilize it twice a year. And it doesn't need any more than that. And usually it'll be in the form of a liquid based fertilizer that you'll mix in with the water when you water it. And like I said, I cannot stress, really be careful not to overwater these, that is the Really, that is really the only way people manage to kill these is by overwatering. You'll be able to tell when it's been overwatered, they let you know. The leaves turn bright yellow. So if you notice on one stem, the leaves are all going yellow, that's a sign you've overwatered and you wanna just not water it for quite a while, let it dry out fully, cut off the yellow leaf because it's not gonna get better once it's at that kind of point, but it's an indication that you've overwatered. Now the CC plant isn't overly picky when it comes to what type of soil to put it in. Another thing I'll often refer to when talking about most other plants is they have specific types of soil mixes that they do better in, whether it be a well-draining soil or a not so well-draining soil. Again, depending what it is. With the CC plant, just a general potty mix is perfectly fine for these. They're not picky at all. 
because pretty much you're not ever going to be fully drenching the soil. You're only going to be watering very small amounts of water and the watering sessions are going to be spaced out roughly two or so months apart. So even if your soil isn't a well draining soil, it's only a small amount of water at a time going into it. So it doesn't make much difference whether it's well draining or not, to be honest, it's not a big deal. So even though you're only watering small amounts, obviously you still want to be careful not to leave this plant sitting in water, meaning if for whatever reason your drip tray under your pot does end up having water in it, you just want to make sure that you empty it and don't leave this plant sitting in water because root rot is literally the only way you'll kill this plant. And like at most other plants, they don't like having their feet wet. So yep, empty your drip tray if it has water in it, but Honestly, the tiny amount of water you're going to give these, I doubt water's even going to make it down to the drip tray most of the time. Now when it comes to repotting these, again it's something you don't have to worry about as much as other plants. Most of the plants I'll say repot them roughly once a year or so. With these you can let them go longer if you want. Um, this one as you can kind of see here, it's got quite a bit of room. I don't know if you can tell, it's got quite a bit of room in that pot still. The thing with a ZZ plant, they like having their root system compact. They like, they like being in a small space in a pot. So you don't necessarily have to worry about whether or not your CC plant has a big enough pot. They actually do better in smaller pots. What will eventually happen, it will eventually grow to the point where the pot won't be round anymore. It'll start bulging out in random spots because the root system and the rhizomes are pushing against the edge of the pot. When it gets to that point, then yes, repot it, but only go up one pot size. Don't go in a much, much, much bigger pot size, just one size up at a time. But wait till it gets to that point where it actually looks like it's root bound. And like I said, if it was another plant looking like that, it would be root bound and it would be problematic. But with a ZC plant, they don't mind it. They actually quite like being compact like that. Another thing that makes these plants easier than others, again, referring to when I talk about other plants, I will often say, don't leave them near a drafty window where you get like a bit of a chilly breeze, especially at night time, because it can give your leaves wind burn and plants, generally tropical plants don't like that. With the CC plant, it's again, not as big of a deal. It's a lot more resilient to being near a drafty window. And actually, this is another way you can kind of regulate how fast and how big your ZC plant will grow. If you want a ZC plant that stays small, like if you buy one that's already little and you want it to stay smaller, you can actually uh, leave it like intentionally near a window that you have open a lot of the time where there's always a bit of a draft coming in, especially a bit of a chilly draft at night. And what this will do, this will actually kind of uh, encourage the ZC plant to not stretch out so much. Like you look at this leaf here, it's huge. That's like a four foot leaf nearly. If you was to put this near a more chilly window, the leaf will be much smaller. It won't stretch out as long. Each individual leaf on the stem will be closer together. So it'll have a more compact look to it and it just won't stretch out. Now when I say these are cold tolerant, they're cold tolerant down to about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. So it's kind of your average chilly night sort of temperature. If you live somewhere where it gets colder than that, where it's snowing, for example, or it's like really, really chilly. That's not something this plant can tolerate. It'll get damaged and potentially have a lot of problems with that, like any tropical plant. But I'm talking more of like a general cold night of let's say around 15 degrees Celsius or so. This plant can cope being next to an open window with a bit of a draft, no problem at all, compared to any other house plant, at least. Now, when it comes to propagating this plant, it's a little different than a lot of other types of plants I've covered, rather than taking cuttings, which I've seen people take cuttings of CC plants, but the, su the success rate is not that high, to be honest, it only sometimes works. So I'm not gonna, I say, I'm not gonna really recommend that because I've not done it myself, so I don't wanna recommend it. But the way people propagate these is they actually split the whole plant in half. So when they're like repotting in the ZC plant, when it's gotten to a fairly large size and you have lots and lots of stems, you can kind of just, split the root system into two, and then you have two ZC plants from one. But you wanna wait till it's a big enough size where you got lots of leaves, you got a big root system, you got multiple tubers. So when you split it, both sections you've split off will have some rhizomes to live off. Regarding pest insects with the ZC plant, this is again another area that they do not fall short on. They are not a pest prone plant. They almost never get pests. It's extremely rare. 
The only way I've found that a ZZ plant will get pest problems is if it's sitting next to another house plant that already has pests and the pests just kind of hop over from one of your other plants to the ZZ plant. Left to its own devices sitting alone away from other plants, it isn't going to get pests. It's extremely rare. The ZZ plants have a very thick waxy cuticle on their leaf gives them kind of a nice glossy uh, sheen to the, to the leaf, but um, it makes it very difficult also for pests to get a foothold and actually do any damage to them. So pests, pest insects like, for example, spider mites, um, they're probably one of the more common indoor houseplant pests. Sometimes things like mealybugs and scale and stuff like that, they generally don't seem to go for ZC plants unless you've got other pest infested plants sitting next to your ZC plant. Then some of them might transfer over but they're not gonna like completely overtake the ZC plant like it would another plant because they're just more resilient to it. And like every other type of house plant with a waxy leaf, you do wanna just give the leaves a little bit of a wipe down with a damp microfiber cloth every now and again, just to keep them looking nice and glossy and shiny. And that way the plant can photosynthesize to its maximum. Probably the only area that these ZZ plant falls short a little bit is that they are poisonous. But then again, so are most of your tropical indoor plants. A lot of them are poisonous. And yeah, so is a ZZ plant. So if you have pets um, that might eat the leaves or you have small children that might eat the leaves, maybe a ZZ plant's not for you. Um, even if you're like taking cuttings or pruning or you're repotting, it is advised to wear gloves just because the sap of the ZZ plant um, might irritate your skin. It does depend though, because I've found most people it's not a problem, but there are some cases of some people just having an allergic reaction to the sap of the CC plant. So if you're not sure if you're one of those people or not, maybe it's best to just wear gloves when doing things like repotting and trimming and stuff like that, where you're gonna be cutting into the plant or potentially getting sap on you. The ZC plant is actually capable of flowering as well. However, you don't wanna buy a ZC plant hoping that it's going to flower because it's not a common thing. It's quite rare for these to flower. And the flower that they produce is pretty average. It's not actually an overly like beautiful decorative sort of flower. It's pretty small and insignificant and it's not really colorful at all. And it, it's kind of produced at the base here. It's not like it comes out of these stems where it's very obvious. It kind of just sprouts out of here and it kind of is around this sort of level. Um, like, like most of your other aeroids, it's that similar sort of aeroid shaped flower. I'll pop a picture of it on the screen if I can find one to show you because I can't actually describe what it looks like. But yeah, they're not an overly beautiful flower. So again, don't be upset if your CC plant doesn't flower. But if it does flower, go for, that's, but if it does flower, that's kind of a good sign. Um, ZC plants will often flower when they're doing really well and they're really happy. So if your ZC plant is one of those rare ones that flowers, you're doing something right, it must be happy with the way you're looking after it. But again, if it doesn't, don't be too upset because yeah, it is a rare thing. And it's not necessarily the case that you're not looking after it properly because it didn't flower. It's just, it's a rare thing for it to flower in general indoors. So don't get your hopes up on it. Now you may notice on my one, um, this leaf here is a slightly lighter shade of green than most of the other leaves. So is um, this leaf here. It's also a lighter green and its waxy cuticle is not as shiny. That's because they're the two newest leaves. This is perfectly normal for these to look like this. So if you notice uh, your CC plant has one leaf or I mean, sorry, one stem that is much lighter in color than all the others and it's not as shiny looking yet and it's a bit softer feeling. Uh, that's nothing wrong with the plant. It doesn't have some sort of deficiency or anything like that. That's just the new leaf. It's perfectly normal. Over time, it will get a darker color and a thicker waxy cuticle. And yeah, it'll look like all the other leaves in time. Right, well, that's basically my video on the Zamiculis zamifolia, commonly known as a ZZ plant. So to summarize this plant on just how easy it is and virtually anyone can keep these, you can put it virtually anywhere in your house, as long as it gets at least a little bit of light, it just grows bigger and quicker in higher lighting. Try to keep it out of direct sun because as, as with most indoor plants, it doesn't like them. Give it a small amount of water every two months or even longer if you just happen to forget, no big deal. Repot it when it's at the point where the pot itself is actually warping and changing shape because of the amount of roots growing in it. 
Again, not a big deal. It doesn't mind being in a small pot. Give your leaves a wipe down every now and again, as you do with virtually every other large leafed houseplant. Fertilize it roughly twice a year with a liquid based fertilizer that you'll mix in with the water. And above all, enjoy your ZZ plant. These are, without a doubt, the absolute easiest, most durable houseplant you could possibly keep, full stop. I don't think anything else is actually more durable and tougher than these are. Just remember to don't eat it, that's all. <laughs> Alrighty guys, so if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave us a like. Don't forget to smash that notification bell so you know when I upload new videos. My Instagram is down below if you want to follow me there as well. But until then, I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.